All right, welcome back to Stand By. I'm Jay. Uh, I'm here with the Big C. Bueno. And Tony. So guys, today we're going to be going over airsoft and its training implications. But first, we got to thank our sponsors, Axiom Training Group. Thank you for Axiom Training Group. Lights, training, all the bad stuff here. We've tagged them in most of our videos. Tony's the head head uh, person on that, also head of uh, CRW. So it's kind of a dual, dual sponsorship, I think. You know? Biggest sponsor of the channel. Yeah, Axiom, CRW, solid. Fun stuff. And uh, we'll, we'll dive in a little of that. We'll yeah. probably have a little separate episode to see what you got. Yeah, let's on do that it. coming up. Uh, also, uh, developed. Developed is our new sponsor, Fitness Marcos over there. Uh, solid. You're still on this program. I am. I'm still on the program. Still uh, doing the food, doing the whole damn thing. Uh, I've dropped uh, three and a half pounds over two weeks so far. So, if you're struggling to maintain health, healthy lifestyle due to your busy schedule, you're not alone. That's why we joined Developed. Well, I, I did for a little bit, Chris. Did you join it yet, or? I have not. Absolutely yet. not. That's crazy. It's still it's a, fat it's a, it's a free still fat as fuck, dude. <laughs> Develop is a sexual exceptional online coaching program that offers customized fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle coaching to clients worldwide. No, no, no Why? reference to step one. Okay. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Whether you're a busy professional, stay-at-home parent, or a student, Develop will help personalize a plan that's adaptable to your lifestyle. Unless you're Chris. Become part of the community like with like-minded individuals who are dedicated to living their best lives. Don't wait any longer. Visit developedmethod.com and join today. Links in the description below. Thanks, Marcos. Anyways, like we're saying, back to Airsoft. Uh, I'll shoot it off with my experience with Airsoft is, I think, what we start in? 2011. 2010, 11. Yeah. 10, 11. Uh, I'd say like probably 09, 08. Yeah, Anyways, better. Airsoft. Yeah, it was wow, a long time ago. Did airsoft, <coughs> rifles, pistols, went to SC Village, Tac City. Tac City, Tac City, Tac City North and Tac City South. Um, um, jumped in after that later on. You stopped, but I kept going, went into uh, where I've done some training uh, even recently. Um, uh, uh, N1, Project N1 out of El Monte. So that's another one. Sounds like it's making a comeback since uh, Low Signature Resource Center. They, they did airsoft when we were over there mm -hmm. instead of like Sims. It's, yep. It just seems to be like the budget-friendly force-on-force uh, scenario that you could do, you know, yep. versus Sims and UTMs, which is a little bit more expensive. And sometimes just basically finicky. Just this yeah. cause problems. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So. Uh, but I used to run this one right here, which is like a KWA. That's a currently the new fill. M4 style, yeah. Phil's Phil's sick or he's on hiatus. Hey Phil. Doing Phil things. <laughs> I used to run this. It's just Whoa, whatever basic. And then uh nineteen eleven. This bad boy right here. Gas. Yeah. Gas blowback. Gas blowback. Dude. So it was cool. I don't know. This one is the uh, I think it's a KJW. Things with these That's are. my experience. I think yeah. I probably K did it for like KJ works. four years. Do you ever dabble in airsoft? The first time was when we went over to uh LRSC. Uh, that was. Uh, I think airsoft is good just from that one uh, experience. If you if you don't game it, like if you actually take the time to like, right, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if you're gaming it, it's it can, you're gaming it. It's, yeah, but if you're using it to like, okay, you know, let me actually you know practice my proper techniques and all that stuff. I think it'd be great. Like you said, budget friendly. Like you know, I, I think to really, I wouldn't say game it, but just be like, you know, you're trying to replicate your exact setup you'd have you mm -hmm. know on the range yeah you'd really have to replicate it and probably throw some money into rifles that only take 30 round mags and you have to reload right for every 30 bbs and you have blowback and yep yeah i guess you could really dive down a whole whole rabbit hole but well that's i think that's the interesting about uh interesting part about it is um the airsoft world has like jumped up exponentially so like so this is like what you and I like. This was the 19 levels what we ran back in the day, um, and you know, it's not like they're not uh, almost a one for one type type setup. Like you know, sure. it still has still has the safety, uh, the backstrap safety, still has the um, trigger safety or the um, thumb safety on it. Um, adjustable sights, you know, the takedowns almost the exact same. I pop out this little pin. Um, rotate it out, you know, it, almost everything about it, it's, it's almost exactly the same as an actual setup. Mm -hmm. um, but where they're starting to get a lot more uh, advanced is, is like they're starting to get um, even more one-to-one -one aspect. Like 
So for example, like this is one of the ones that I, I picked up uh, about two years ago. Um, this is the 19X. It was to, to mimic my, my uh, Glock 45. And I got the 19X version because I don't have a 19X, but it's the same frame. So I know, hey, this is my training gun. And then I wrote training all over it. Um, so I can use this for uh, demonstration stuff and not have to worry about, you know, using a live gun. I was painting orange. I could. <laughs> But I just, you know, didn't, Blue. but, um, yeah, but it's pain, but it has like, you know, has all the same workings. Everything's exactly the same. It's a one, for, it, this thing is legitimately a one for one. It is a, um, stamp by Glock. It is a Glock registered, hmm. um, gun itself. And like on the side of it says, uh, officially licensed product of Glock. So, so they probably get a little kickback. Yeah. So, you know, probably, but you know, it has, it, everything's one for one on, on this whole setup. Um, the, the mm -hmm. rifles are now getting to the point where they have, um, full blowback systems. Do people run red like, dots on these? Yeah, I, I actually have a buddy of mine who uh, runs a red dot on his. Um, so you know you can do stuff like that. Um, the the uh, the rifles now are starting to run uh, gas systems where they have they actually have a kick to them. Um, like the bolt actually reciprocates, so you actually have full feeling of everything. So they're getting pretty pretty advanced now, and like I said, I, that's what I like the most about it is the fact that it has. Uh, that they have their people are starting to realize the the training potential out of it, right? Yeah, because when we, you and I started, it was literally just have fun. Yeah, um, that was almost like a workout for us. For a lot for of a cardio, ton of cardio, like running, run, run around, sliding around, you know, you know, crouching. Well, well Mondays and Wednesday at Tech it was pistols and shotguns. Yeah, so, yep. was, so it was that's easy that's to get doing. around the guys with like full auto and the yeah. gas guns that are shooting like a million rounds a second. Yep. This is kind of like, hey, you either got skills or you don't. That's it. Like everyone's on the same playing field. Exactly. So that's what I kind of liked a lot about about um, doing that. And and you know, there's a lot of systems. Like there's a there's a few instructors. Like um, a friend of mine um, coming out to CRW as well. If you guys are curious, uh, if you guys listen to this, uh, his name is Kawa. He was out there last year. Uh, two Alpha. Um, he teaches he teaches uh, his CQB stuff with with Airsoft. Mm -hmm. um, he teaches classes over at uh, Project N One. Um, and they do, where's that at? Uh, El Monte, oh. right, uh, right off the 605. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, shout out to John for that one. So, but you know, there's, it has a lot of merits to it. Um, but like you said, like you have to take it, you know, yeah. take it seriously, right? If you want to just run around and run around, like you can, but, um, if you actually want to like try and get the tactic aspect of things, uh, there's a lot to learn behind it. The, the, uh, you know, recoil management, you, you'll never be able to really do anything with right. that. Yeah. But, um, as far as as far as movements and and all that kind of stuff, it has it can do all that. So uh, that's one thing I think is really cool about it. And so like you know, I currently have three different ones. Uh, this KWA was actually one of the first. Um, this was their KWA's answer to because Glock for a while was not registering, not letting people do uh, an actual setup. And uh, the only ones they were able to find was like in Japan or out there where they couldn't really the copyright laws basically didn't exist <laughs> um or mexico uh so but they came out with this atp they called it the adaptive training pistol so it's basically supposed to be a one, be a one for one of a glock it, it fits in glock holsters and stuff mm. and this is what i originally got um for that before this one so this is the mimic of a, a glock 17 um and honestly if i shit man if i actually had that and a real the grip i'd actually run that real life it feels real good yeah it feels good so, but yeah, it, it's, you know, it has, it has its merits to it. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of doing it. I mean, what did you, when you actually did it? So, uh, well, recently you guys did that thing. So what did you find like was kind of an eye opener for you using it? Uh, it was, I don't say like back to my first point yeah. where like, if you take it serious, it could be awesome, but. It depends on who you're with, like who you're playing or against or yeah, yeah. you're training with. Um, because the opposite group was like straight full auto, you know, like guys just going to work, going to work. Yeah. And it's like, OK, well, I can't do the, the normal stuff if they're going to be sprinting across the room. And like, so the stipulation on that, though, was two guys had rifles and two guys had pistols. Correct. It was four on four. Yeah. Just to, for the audience. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it all boils down to like if everyone's taking it for what it. For seriously, for training purposes, it'll, it's going to be awesome. But yeah. if one side is going to game it and the other one's going to try to, it's like can't really can't really be fair. Yeah. One of the things I don't the only thing the, the one of the training aspects that I don't like is like um, so like for for example of like the mags. So 
uh, every time we did these things, I don't know if you remember, like we could never do a, what you, people would consider like a speed reload, right? Just drop the mag on the ground, grab a new one, pop it and run. Two reasons. One, like someone else is going to come around, around and really pick it up, pocket it, you lose <laughs> your shit. Second thing you'd run into is, you know, if this thing hits concrete or, or metal, like thing pops out, the gas goes and like the mag's now useless because this thing's super heavy. It's, you know, it's a full metal mag that has internals that, you know, aren't supposed to be like smacked on the ground. Yeah. So like you always had to do like your quote unquote tactical reload type things, you know, pull it out, pocket it, and then pop a new one in or put it in a dump pouch, whatever it was, because you couldn't just like dump and go. So like that's one of the downsides I see to it, um, which is kind of annoying. You think that would like, create a bad habit? If you were um, just using it solely for training or not really? I mean, I don't know. It's, I think I do a lot of reps. It's, it's possible. It's possible you could uh, use it for that kind of that kind of training. Um, I, I used to have a. I used to like be a big proponent of like the whole training scar aspect. Um, but the more I've been, the more training I've personally have done, um, the more stuff I've I've done itself. Like maybe it's just me, but like I can I can disassociate like. Uh, a gaming piece for what I'm doing, like in, in a real life aspect, right? Um, the, the kind of this, the way I kind of explain it is like, um, like think think of it as anything else that you doing doing. Like you know that like, hey, if you're a professional at X, right? But there's a recreational portion of it. Um, take driving for an example, right? You're a professional driver. You're fucking used to driving at 260 miles an hour in a F1 car, and just like blazing it down, and you know how to do all these turns stuff. So, doesn't just because you do that professionally doesn't mean you can't like disassociate. Hey, this that's a race, and then this is a I'm in a regular car driving driving to go get the groceries. Right. Or this is a defensive driving style uh, class, and I'm I'm trained a shit ton doing defensive driving, um, but now I, I have to, you know I can't work on that in a in a race setting. Like you can you can change back and forth. So like I don't know I don't really know if I if I really agree with the whole concept of of training scars. Um, I can see where the concept can come into play. But um, I I don't know I'm kind of I'm not saying that it's it doesn't exist I'm saying that from what the my personal experience lately is I don't know if I if it exists as strongly as a lot of people um, perceive it to be nowadays or maybe it's because too like you train way more than above average like you train way more than the average bear probably yeah like the average person out there is yeah. not shooting as much as you no, no so maybe in them it might be different because it could be can, yeah you can disassociate because you're, you're at the range all the time yeah and that's very possible like I said so that's why it's like i it's um i'm not claiming like that doesn't exist but like by no means am i saying like training scars can't exist like yeah of course they i think they maybe can for certain people for me i can i can separate the two right i can understand that you know this is i got to put this away because it's the simple fact of this will break yeah. Like I can take that that second go. Oh shit! I gotta be careful. Put this away because I don't want it to break. Um, but if I'm like if I'm actually shooting something and doing something where I don't worry about it, I'm just gonna dump it, right? But I don't know. Um, so, but I mean, I guess that could be something that is is considerable, right? For training scars, if you wanted to go down that route. Um, but you know, there's that. Um, the other thing that would kind of, that's kind of annoying is if you're playing with more of like an outdoor setting. Um, if you're doing stuff for you know. The BBs are uh, standard like 2.0, 2.0 grams, and they have 2.5. Um, and like, you know, so like you have to worry now if, if it's a heavier wind, like now you're having to worry about your BBs and like not flying true. Like indoors, we've never had that problem. We always played indoors, CQB style stuff. So that was never an issue for us. But that's the only, those are like the things that I can see would be the downsides to using Airsoft. But um, upsides, it's cheaper, right? You can still get all your tactics in. Um, the industry has blown up so much to where you can basically get a one for one of your exact gun. Hmm. Um, and even there are people I see people doing, uh, putting real steel parts on their gun. Like I know people who put on like real, real EOTEX, real rails, like on their rifles. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, all, I mean, all these. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> I, I saw, I saw a guy who built out, um, um, an 870 shotgun. It has, it's a, it was a gas blowback shotgun. It literally, every time you pumped it, it, popped out a shell because it had a certain amount of rounds in it. it had like like six or seven bbs inside of it shot those out you'd pump it it'd rock one out and you'd run it that way and it would and they literally had like furniture on it their airsoft shotgun was like nine hundred dollars jesus god damn that's a real <laughs> shot that's a real 870 yeah that's more than that's more than a <laughs> more than a real 870 you know, but it's like it's well if you think about like all if you upgraded your like you you did upgraded parts to it that's for example 
but you know it's it's it, you're basically can, you can get a real shotgun for that price so oh, it's yeah. like but you know it's like if you're trying to have the realistic aspect of it okay i can see how that makes sense so i don't know it's it's weird it's a, it's hard to um it's hard to like for me to fathom wanting to do that for like a game like spend that much money for on a gun for a game when i can do the same thing for a real steel but you know if you're trying to have a one for one and if you're trying to do that I can see the potential of how it has usefulness. I would say interject real quick. If you're going to spend that, there's nothing against your no. guy. If you're going to spend like 900 bucks on guy, the shock. Guy. Oh, uh, I just, it's yeah. a guy that, it's a guy oh. that I, I, I saw his, his setup. Well, well, to, well, to, well, guy, well to that, well to that guy, <laughs> if you're going to spend 900 bucks on a shotgun, dude, I'd, I'd suggest you spend 900 bucks and like go to a fucking class. Like you're one of your classes. Yeah. And, like, Spend the money on like actual uh, an instructor that's gonna nine hundred dollars. You can yeah. buy a fucking shotgun for two three hundred dollars and still, go, and to still go to a class with the ammo. Yeah, so that's like true. I don't know. But it's again, just, airsoft is I think it's more tailored around people who maybe other countries who can't have real guns. Right, mm-hmm. you see a lot true. of fucking countries yeah. that just buy it. Just they want to be have the American culture, right? Like fucking yeah. have be gun owners and fucking you know Helmets be trained, and well trained, you know do military stuff. Whether you call it fucking larping or whatever but they just can't do it because of the gun laws yeah even some yeah. states right it's like you know no one's ever going to really have that same experience as would be combat or law enforcement like in the field you could train for it all day but it's the same thing kind of i don't know larping training yeah i mean a, a great example is like look at your your little like m4 setup right like if you try to have that exact same setup in oh, i go to jail you go to exactly you'd go to jail in california for that because you, you can't get, you can't get a tax federal stamp. prison you can't get a tax stamp that's a real gun you know like that's a you know and it but it looks it's a one for one setup basically yeah, yeah, yeah you know so you get to have that kind of nice those nice little features out of it so you get to you know and you get to go ahead and practice your a cqb setup with a shorter gun um you know what those are designed for yeah so you know it, it has its it has its usefulness yeah yeah thing. there's no doubt like if there was a match or like you know i would probably go to i'd probably spend a lot more money than i need to but if everyone in the match is like all right this is like sim stuff mm-hmm. so everyone's kind of got like the same basic like you know there's three dudes with m4s that are all single shot no full auto yeah fucking maybe 50 round 60 round mag or whatever that's one thing. It's like you're going out there to these matches. These dudes have got like shooting around the corner in box the- mags and fucking 600 <laughs> round BBs, and they're just spraying and praying. Just letting it's it like, go. Well, remember the pole star, polar stars uh, came in when we first started. Yeah, those are ridiculous. God, like, and it's gotten so fed, much. It's gotten so much worse. A million rounds a second. It's like <laughs> just shoots laser beams. It's like uh, <laughs> it's not really fun. But it 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 could be if like everyone maybe was on the same page. Like all right, you know, we're doing it this way. You can test all your equipment and a force on force. Uh, I think that's why we really like pistol and shotguns so mm-hmm. much because it was, you know, everyone's on the same playing field versus like, yeah, you got guys doing all this bullshit. Full auto. The only thing it's I think, wild, dude. Uh, along with the cons of it, I think just you have these BBs and you can't tell who's going to call their shots. Like, you know, when we're at yeah, that's true. Yeah. Low signature resource center, they, just, you know, guys were calling their shots and it's frustrating. It's like watching them get shot. Get watching them get shot and just not calling. It. I get it. Adrenaline's adrenaline's pumping, hundred percent. Especially guys who never do it all the time. I know mine was. And, you know, seeing your BB hit them is frustrating. And then them turning around and shooting you, it's like, all right, cool. All right. Well, what was the point of that then? Yeah. That, and that, that definitely takes away from the training aspect. Like, and that's where the sim, like, you know, sim rounds, like you're not going to, you, you, you get hit by a sim round. Like for one, it hurts way more yeah. by sim. Two, it leaves a little bit of pain on you. So, you know, you got hit. Yeah. Like there's, you can't argue that. Can't argue. Yeah. There's pain. Right. Sure. So like, I think that's, that's definitely something that's, in, um, that has the, the disadvantage of it, right? If you wanted to do that, and someone doesn't want to call their head, like, "Oh, I didn't feel it," or something, or like maybe they, maybe they're being honest. They truly didn't feel it, right? Sure. Because um, most of these, like when we played, when we played the the max, the max uh, FPS was a three fifty. Hmm. That was our max FPS on these, and the chrono of the guns. So like, no oh, shit. Yeah. So like, I think you had a leeway of like um, five, like pl- uh, plus I still like three fifty five was like your leeway within there. So if, like, if you're at like three fifty three or 352, 354, that was okay. But like, once you got up past that, like, all right, you gotta, you can no longer go. Like, you gotta, you gotta either tune down your gun or, or mess with the springs or, you know, mess with the hopper or whatever it is to, to do that. Um, so it's, it's those kind of things that, that can definitely be annoying. Um, cause, but it is what it, you know, you just, I think, I think we're all on the same page of like, it has its merits, it has its uh, uses. 
Um, but you have to take it for what it is at the same time. Yeah, I think it has a place. I don't think, I mean, I'm sure there's companies out there, you know, like Low Signature Resource Center that have mm-hmm. kind of figured out. We've only gone to one of their things, right? But yeah, uh, yeah I think uh, this would apply pretty good if maybe you had like a scenario built and set up and not exactly a force on force. Mm-hmm. Because you have the, like, for our instance, right, you had force and force. Like, we knew it was airsoft. We knew these guys were going to just do airsoft things, right? Not about to die. So we're yeah. just like... <laughs> exactly. We kind of just, like, rushed them, right? Like, yeah. there's no tactics involved. We just sprinted. Yes. Um, so there's that, right? It's like, okay, we just sprinted, flanked, and smoked them, and they got smoked, whatever. But if maybe you had a scenario where there's, like, you know, you put somebody in a room, you don't know how many guys you're going against... You know, uh, you've probably done it, right, in a class mm-hmm. or whatever. You just have, like, a lone gunman inside of a house maybe or, I don't know, something different. Something where it's not like, hey, it's, we're just force on force airsoft. Forces you to take your time. Yeah, kind of take your time. To do. So like, yeah, uh, like, be disciplined, uh, I guess. Like, a good a good example is, like, so it, um, there's a company up north, um, uh, Core Vision Training, a uh, good buddy of mine, Kyle. Uh, he um, does, does, it, does it up there in Washington. I think it's like Bremerton, uh, Bremerton, Bremerton is the uh, they're where they're at, uh, but they have a very similar uh, to like LSRC, um, where they have a, a whole whole arena where it's airsoft stuff, but they teach CQB tactics, and that's like their whole that's like their bread and butter. Um, but what's really cool about their stuff is like it's exactly what you're saying. Like they'll set up scenarios like, okay, you guys gone through a uh, bunch of training and stuff. Here's scenario now. This is your scenario. You're you walked into an active shooter, or you walked in. It's your own house, or whatever whatever scenario they lay out, and they start pumping music into the into the place. Um, you know they they have they have people screaming through the speakers. They have loud loud music going. They have random gunshots going off, and the speakers aren't like quiet. Like they're loud, so like it has a lot going on, and you have no idea who's in what room what's in each room, like how everything's are set up. Like, cause you know, they'll, they'll just make up different scenarios where sometimes you do know what's going on. Like they're like, Hey, um, th- it's your house. Go get a 10 minute walkthrough of everything. So you know where everything's at and then we'll set, and then we'll, uh, bring in the op fours afterwards. Or they're like, Hey, it's a, it's a random, random area. You have no idea what's going on. You don't know anything about this house. You just have to adapt to what's, to what's going on. And that can be super stressful because mm-hmm. you have like the music playing, people screaming, um, you don't know who's in what room, what's in what you, so you have to take, you have to take everything like super seriously because it's, you know, although you're not going to die, like they're going to shoot you at this distance and yeah. at this distance at 300 feet at, you know, 350 feet per second, that shit hurts. Like yeah, I've seen that, I've, should, <laughs> I've seen those things like pierce and like pierce into people's skin. So like shit sucks. So like they'll fuck, they'll mess with that kind of stuff. So I think that can be something to be, um, like that's where it really comes into play. I think that that's where it really has has its merits mm-hmm. out of it. But I don't know. I, I I'm a fan of it. Um, I I would honestly like to do more of it myself for the scenario based type stuff. But at the same time, I'm also so goddamn busy just getting everything else in that I do. But I don't know. Would you? I mean, so is it for you? Like, would you consider it to be something you'd want to do more? Of? Like, if you if you had the opportunity, like you had more free time. You know, obviously, you're working a shit ton. But if you had more free time, like, and one was down the street from you, they're like, hey, we're doing this every, like, once a weekend, like, every Saturday, we do we do scenario-based training. Would you, like, go, hey, I'm going to jump in and try and get in at least once a week, or? Yes. If they were doing it, like you said, your boy's doing it up North Kyle. Yeah, yeah. If they're doing it like that, fuck yeah. Makes so a lot of sense, right? Makes a ton of sense. Uh, still, I'm, not, I'm not going there to play airsoft. Yeah, it's still fundamentals. All that stuff still applies. So you're not going to just run into the house. It's one lone gunman killed his wife or whatever, whatever scenario they get. Yeah, exactly. Like, you got to be realistic. And your adrenaline's like psh, jacked mm-hmm. up and all that shit. So, yeah, I'd do it. So, I mean, you guys did, I think you talked about it a little bit. You guys did um, uh, like simulations before for for uh, for training, right? Mm-hmm. At, yes. at a department? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd, yeah. That, how'd that go? Well, great for me. Yeah, it didn't go so good for me. <laughs> what happened? Uh, they did like a force on force scenario. They put yeah. it against, against each other. I thought it was cool. What did you think? Nah, it's pretty fucking whack. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it whack? Did you get I, work? I or fell what? for the okie doke, dude. I fell for the okie doke and uh, I'll set up the scenario. Good old Jay right, here. Let's hear it. Let's hear what happened. In the ass. Let's see what happened. <laughs> Play in the arm. <laughs> set up the scenario. Set it up. All right. Set it up. So, what was it? Uh, you're on one side of a car. So imagine it's like a, a SUV. Someone's on the hood side. Someone's on the trunk side. Okay. Like opposite corners. So your hand's on the fucking hood. 
if you're on the hood side, your hands on the like the trunk kind of area. If you're on the trunk side, and uh, one one set, ready, set, go, you fucking hands off. You draw your gun, and then you're kind of dancing around the car, you know, doing like a, a little gunfight. There's no windows. It's all sims. Yeah, okay. each mag only has five rounds. Okay, how many you get like you get? three mags. Okay, yeah, one three, in the gun, and then two two in the standard load. Yeah, load out for. Okay, so you get 15 rounds total, basically. Yeah. yeah. And then so, what happens, let's say, if you miss every single round? The other guy's just yeah. going to get you, I guess. If you guys all miss, then I guess it's game over, but okay. nobody ran into that scenario. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're pretty much just battling it out around the car to see who's fucking, you know, tactics and all that stuff are more on point. And who okay. Just them. using yeah. cover, shooting yeah. through the windows. It's like he was in the back, and I was trying to shoot through the car, but it kept hitting the cage because... You know, that's what the the paint rounds do. They just they just splattered. Yeah. I don't know if they yeah. really penetrated, so they didn't really hit him directly. I through. think in real life that probably would have killed me, dude. Um, <laughs> there would have been frag. Like, I don't think it would have. It might have killed you. No, sure, I, I think that shit would have fucking hit me in the face. I put like ten rounds through that cage because I saw it, <laughs> I saw it splatter psh, like it fucking exploded. I put like ten rounds through that cage. I was like, oh, he's not even paying attention to the cage. Yeah, so I just started dumping through the cage, and I got to my. Last max. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I would hold on to this last five in case he flanks me or does something. Yeah, and then it didn't work out so good for me. He gave me the old uh, empty empty mag toss one way, and I looked one way, and I was like, wow, there's an empty mag flying through the air. Then I just got, boom, shot right in the arm. Flanked me, dude. The old bait and switch. So what happened was my mag was on the ground. I was at the front of the hood. He was at the back. And I could see his head looking towards the passenger side of the hood, like to see if I was going to come around this way. So I grabbed my mag. I tossed it in the in the grass or the brush over there and I could just see his head track it like oh that's a mag tracking him. I'm like oh well it's my time to flank him and I just flanked him and shot him right in the shoulder damn if it works it works it works I gotta say it works so how many rounds did you go because you said you won that one so I'm assuming you moved on to the next moved on to the next one you won the whole thing no no I lost one well no but I mean you're the overall winner though yeah I right. guess so you got but, handicapped all the way to your fucking being on your gut dude just well no I was on both my knees with the hand on the hood, I guess. Yeah, you might have that was the last. That was the last one. I got smoked. So it just kept progressing where, you know, it was actually, I thought it was a really good idea. Uh, at first, it's your dominant hand, so now you only have one hand. They give you a kettlebell, fucking non-dominant hand. All right, cool. It's easy to draw and reload and do all yeah. that stuff as you're used to it. And then they're like, all right, we'll switch if you win that round. So now I had it in my dominant hand, so I had to draw from level three holster while getting shot at, <laughs> while putting it, my hand on the car, and then he says, go, now I'm trying to fight the holster and keep an eye on the other person. It was it just kept getting harder and harder. So I won that one, and then it was like, all right, now you're on your knees, with your other hand on your hood, while the other guy's just standing regular draw. So he's drawing in a sub-second. It takes me five seconds probably to get out of this thing. <laughs> just didn't work out. But, but that should prove to me that it is possible. If you're that handicapped, you can still fucking win. Yeah, and I think yeah, if he didn't give out that win. hint, like, hey, it takes him a second to get out his gun. Dudes were trying to rush you. He fucking, I saw him. He ran into the trunk trying to get to you so fast. He's like, oh, shit. That was after he told him, like, hey. You, yeah, he's like, you understand got, you have time. time. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. Psh. And then he, he figured it out. But, yeah. It was, I think it was a good training aspect, you know, get your heart rate going, uh, tactics. That's where I think, you know, Airsoft or Sims will prevail over regular static like once you get all your static and your fundamentals down and all the good stuff i think this is a good force on force option and that's i thought the scenario was great yeah it was pretty awesome especially with all the battling around cars now i think you got it benefits you have all your windows down so it simulates you know rounds going through it things like that but i think it definitely has its place so do you think we could do that kind of training up at burrow yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Now, awesome. would we want to? Now, would would you want to do that with airsoft, or would you say no? We should do that with with uh, Sims. Yeah, I would do it with airsoft, but it have to be. Yeah, you know, I don't want to hear people's excuses like, oh, it's oh I just not my, it's not my bag. It's not this. It's not that. Yeah. yeah, majority of dudes have the M and P, so it's not like, you know, it'd be easy to buy, you know, two hundred dollar airsoft gun. Yeah. P. Here's your mags. You get five. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good. Uh, solid. I think it would be really solid. Uh, maybe we just get an airsoft sponsor, pick e bike ups, sponsor us. You know, there we go, couple, guys. A couple take handguns, take care of us, and do some training. But that'd be sick, though. I'd be kind of, I'd be fun. I'd be good fun to do. Uh, kind of get a full setup like that, and just do some bunch of scenarios. Like, cause we have the shoot house. We'll take, we'll take one of the like. Maybe we'll use, we use uh, Phil's Phil's car because his car sucks. 
Yeah, this car sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it'd be beneficial if we yeah, picked yeah. up an M and P one, the same mags. You know, people don't really have an excuse, and they're mostly fucking iron sight losers out there, anyways. On patrol, they don't fucking get red dots. <laughs> Just raise his hand. <laughs> Just, uh, fucking Mexican federales out there with red dots in their handgun <laughs> comps and extended mags, and you know, whatever. That was pretty sick. Grip tape and a one point oh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> But, you know, if everyone's got the 2.0 Airsoft, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, I'd pick a couple of those up. You probably have to do two of them. That way I don't know everybody bitching. I'd, I'd pick them up. I don't care. But I, mean, yeah. I think it'd be worth doing for yeah. sure. Yeah, that was fun. I just kind of run something like that. Shit, I think I think the key there is to giving them like the five round mags. Like okay. you roll load up a full Airsoft gun with like, you know, 20 round mags. Yeah, it's it's realistic, but it's like. They're just going to be dumping. Yeah, you get a lot more of like repetitions with loading. Oh shit, I'm out. I only got five. Their head has to process like I only got five rounds. Better make them count. And my reload's coming into play. Should I be faster than this guy? I think the round counting has a lot to do with it too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think it's a great training aspect. I'd be down for be that. Kind of, I think it'd be kind of fun. It'd be funny watching people do it because it was funny watching, you know, regular cops do it at training. Yeah, that was classic. And you could see like. Uh, I gamed it. I gamed it for him, obviously. When I dumped him, he's an easy person to dump. Uh, I gamed it for another guy who was there. I kind of just did like you know a little football juke, made it look oh, like yeah. I was going this way. Then he thought I was going that way, went the other way, and just shot him in the back again. It's like little airsoft games yeah. like that helped, and you know people who obviously hadn't done it in a while or maybe done it at all. I think it's got its place. I don't think those games are a bad thing. No. I mean, not. I don't know. Take it out of context, depending upon your situation. Like, I'm not gonna run into a fucking house with yeah, five yeah, dudes yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if it's one on one like that, maybe the game does work. Shit, maybe you fucking sure. Ooh, I'm right here, and then whoop, run around a car or something. He doesn't yeah. see you. Or I don't know. Could work. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's about yeah. it we got for uh, for this airsoft shit though. But so yeah, if you're an airsoft company, you want to throw us a couple guns our way, we'll test them, take shoot them, field, shoot them. Do a lot of different trainings. I help out a couple of law enforcement guys. Shoot we've been doing. We've also been doing quite a few different like law enforcement days and we're, yeah, or range days kind of stuff. Yeah, we had one recently and it went pretty well. We had did some uh, some uh, uh, what's it called? Obviously, just a bunch of drills on the range that we ran, and then and did competitions there, and then we also did the uh, shoot house stuff, which worked worked out real well. Yeah, guys got to. What's it called? It kind of like shake test their gear. Saw yeah. a lot of things flying. I yeah. oh, saw a lot of shit yeah. flying. They put all their stuff on. Oh shit! They we had quite a few different departments. Uh, department guys show up. That was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, not just not just you know like local departments. We had some guys show up from kind of far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so. kind of cool to to see and um, have them doing that. So uh, for those guys who came out, and if you're watching, you know appreciate you guys coming out. It's a lot of fun. Um, and hopefully we, we can we're planning to do more of those kind of things as well. So keep an eye out on our IG and stuff and. Uh, Hopefully we can put more of those on. Yeah, hundred yes. percent. Those are good. Those are good. I think they really appreciate it. The dynamic situations, the scenarios, and yeah. things like that. So, all right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, later.